hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make this ankara long top that i'm wearing and i like it because it has side slits that are literally up to the waist so it's really comfortable and chic if that's something that you would like to see definitely keep watching and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because i'm sure you're gonna enjoy it if you haven't subscribed don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell thank you guys and enjoy the video To make your Ankara long top, you need the following items. You need a measuring tape. You'd also need a good pair of scissors. You need your tailor's chalk or fabric marker. You need a button. So you want to choose one that you really like or something. You'd also need some pins. You need about two to two and a half yards of fabric. I'm, I've got two yards here. However, depending on your size, you can need more or less. And of course, you need a pattern master, which is one of my favorite tools. If you're looking to shop some of these tools, check out the links I have in the description bar below. Start off by taking away about a quarter to half a yard of fabric for the sleeves. I would actually just recommend that you take out a quarter of your fabric so that you have enough. To check that what you have is enough, you want to make sure that it's your hip measurement plus 12 inches allowance. So go ahead and check before you cut out the quarter that you need for the sleeves. You want to check that the rest is your hip measurement plus 12 inches of ease. Afterwards, properly fold the fabric into four so that the folded edge is against the separated edges. So basically what you want to do is you want to fold it over so that you have space between the um, folded edge and the separated edges. So the folded edge will be the center front and then the separated edges will be the center back. Pin the folded fabric on the separated edges so that there's space of about one inch. So basically if you have space of two inches, it's fine, but you want to make sure it's at least one inch of gap. At the top, mark out a starting horizontal line. This will function as the shoulder line. Then go ahead and mark out the vertical measurements, starting with the shoulder to bust point measurement, and then two inches above the shoulder to bust point measurement, mark the shoulder to arm O measurement. Mark out the vertical shoulder to waist measurement and the total length that you want for your long top so for me i literally just worked with what was left of the fabric and it was absolutely fine so by now you should have the shoulder line the ammo line the bust line the waistline and the hem line on the shoulder and ammo lines Mark half the shoulder measurement plus half an inch sewing allowance. So if your shoulder measurement is 15 inches, you want to go ahead and mark half of that plus half an inch, which is 8 inches. Connect the point on the shoulder line to the point on the ammo line with a vertical line as shown. Starting from the center front, mark the neck width of 3.5 inches. And then go ahead and mark the back neck depth of one inch and that should be marked on the center back while the front neck depth of three and a half inches should be marked on the center front again the center front is the folded edge while the center back is the separated edges go ahead and draw in the neckline as shown on the vertical shoulder line Mark one inch for the shoulder slant and then connect this point to the neck width point with a slant line as shown. Mark out half an inch sewing allowance at the top of the shoulder as shown. Then go ahead and mark out half the vertical shoulder line and draw in the ammo curve. The point of marking out half of the vertical shoulder line is just so that you know when your arm o should go in a little bit, which is perfectly normal. On the arm hole and bust lines, mark out a quarter of the bust measurement plus half an inch for ease and then one inch for the sewing allowance. On the waistline, mark out a quarter of the waist measurement plus one and a half inches for ease at the waist and then one inch for the sewing allowance. Go ahead and connect this point and as you can see, I just used my free hand. 
All right, guys. So at this point, depending on how you like your top, you can either take it straight down from the waist measurement. However, I wanted mine to have a bit of like some shape or some definition. So from the waist point, I would recommend that you go ahead and mark the waist to hip measurement. And the formula for that is the hip measurement divided by four minus one inch. And at that point, you want to mark a quarter of the hip measurement. However, you wouldn't be adding any allowance. So mark a quarter of the hip measurement at the hip point and. As well as the hem point then go ahead and connect the point at the hem and the point at the hip line with a vertical line as shown connect the waist to the hip with a slant line and then make sure to blend all the sharp angles from the center front mark one inch outwards on the center back and you want to mark this all through the length of the top Go ahead and cut out the top along the matte lines. Cut out the necklines, being careful to only cut out the back neck first, then go ahead and separate the pieces and cut out the front neckline. Cut out a couple of bias strips so that you can finish the necklines for the front and for the back. If you don't know how to do that, do check out the video that I have linked in the description bar as well as in the iCAD showing you how to cut your own bias strip using your fabric. Unpin the pieces and then finish the back neckline with bias strips. After finishing the back neckline, this is what it looks like. So the next thing to do is to place your pieces together, the back pieces, and you make sure that they are like properly placed and aligned. Then go ahead and mark 7 inches vertically from the back neckline points. Then from that 7 inches point, you want to mark 1 inch all the way down to the hem and sew on that 1 inch as shown. Alright guys, so after sewing the back straight down and leaving the 7 inches gap, this is what it looks like and as you can see, I went ahead to overlock my stitches just to keep it from fraying and I also went ahead to open up the seams by ironing it. So the next thing to do is to fix the button as well as the button loop. To fix the button loop, you want to cut out a small strip of fabric that's about 4 inches by 1 inch and then you want to pipe as shown. So piping involves you folding it in a couple of times so that it looks really neat and then you can go over and sew it in place. After piping, crisscross the loop so that it's wide enough for the button to go through and then attach it to one of the sides of the back neck as shown. Go ahead and finish off the front neckline with the bias tape as well. After sorting out the front neckline, this is what it should look like. So next thing is to place the back piece on the front piece and you want to make sure that the right sides of both pieces are facing each other. Then go ahead and pin the shoulders together. After pinning the shoulders together, Mark out the sewing allowance of half an inch and then go ahead and sew the shoulders together. You also want to sew or repeat on the other side as well. After sewing the shoulders, this is what the shoulders look like. The next thing to do is to sew the sides. 
To sew the sides, go ahead and pin the sides together, starting at the armhole and then stopping at about one inch below the waistline. So guys, initially I had pinned up, up until about three or four inches below the waistline, but I found out that when I finished the garment, it was actually difficult to wear. So I had to loosen it, which is why I'm telling you to sew up until one inch below the waistline or one inch or at the waistline exactly. So you want to sew up onto the waistline or one inch below the waistline. So go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance of one inch and then sew along the max points. Pin the sides in by one inch. So guys, at this point, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm doing and just follow through because I don't know if there's any um, clear way to kind of explain. But basically, I'm just folding in one inch at the sides and I'm holding it in place with pins. You also want to repeat this on the other side as well. After pinning one inch in at the sides, go ahead and sew it in place. While sewing, you want to make sure that you sew carefully and your sewing is neat because it's going to show on the right side of the fabric. So go ahead and sew as described. After sewing the sides, this is what it looks like and as you can see it looks pretty neat if i can say so myself so you want to go ahead and repeat this on the other side as well and then go ahead and hem the bottom of your top to hem your top you want to fold in half an inch and then one inch and sew that in place so that it looks like this just after sewing so the next thing to do is to cut out the sleeves and to do that you want to measure the arm all Fold the fabric intended for the sleeves into four. That's because we'll be cutting both sleeves at once. Afterwards, go ahead and measure out the ammo measurement you took earlier. You want to measure this horizontally from the top to the bottom. Measure out the desired sleeve length plus two inches vertically all the way through. And then at the opposite end of the sleeve, go ahead and mark out five inches vertically. This is so that we can draw in the S-shaped ammo curve. After marking out 5 inches vertically, go ahead and draw in the S-shaped ammo curve as shown. And then at the hem, mark out half the bicep measurement plus 1 inch allowance and then connect it back to the 5 inches mark as shown. Go ahead and cut out the sleeves and then after cutting out the sleeves, you want to notch the sleeve crown. So if you would like a more detailed tutorial on how to cut and sew short sleeves, long sleeves or three quarter sleeves, do check out the link that I have in the description bar below as well as in the iCard above. It's a very detailed tutorial and it shows you how to properly cut sleeves as well as sew it in place. Hem the sleeves by folding in half an inch and then one inch. Fold the hem sleeves into two so that the right sides are facing each other and then go ahead and sew on a one inch sewing allowance. After sewing, go ahead and fix the sleeves to the armhole, making sure to match the side seam on the top to that of the sleeves and then the shoulder line on the top to the notch on the sleeve crown so guys at this point this is what your top should look like and your top is now finished like i said if you like a more detailed tutorial on the sleeves do check out the links i have in the description bar and i'm sure they would help you all right guys so we've come to the very end of this video thank you so much for watching this video to the very end i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it was worth your while if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to share don't forget to leave your comments suggestions and feedback in the comment section below and also if you haven't subscribed don't forget to subscribe thank you and i'll see you next sunday bye